Just over 50 years, the Congressional Black Caucus has insisted that lawmakers hear the demands of millions of African Americans earning the reputation, conscience of the Congress. The organization's first public battle came in the early 1970s while it was transitioning into a formal body. On this day in 1971, 12 members of the House, all black Democrats, stood up to President Richard Nixon. Nixon initially refused to meet with the group to discuss issues significant to African Americans. Following that act, the caucus boycotted Nixon's State of the Union address in a move that would catapult the caucus into public notoriety and political viability. In a letter to Nixon, the CBC wrote, The president's politics and policies have divided this nation, pitting the rule against the cities, the rich against the poor, black against white, and young against old. You have failed to give the moral leadership necessary to guide and unify this nation in time of crisis. The caucus spoke to Nixon with a boldness reflective of their expectations of an inclusive America. The name was created by one of the, late, the last members of the caucus, the last surviving member, which is Charles Rangel. Founding members included Shirley Chisholm and John Conyers Jr. CBC members were the first draft legislation to make Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday a federal holiday and also were at the forefront in pushing for sanctions against South Africa's apartheid government. Today, nearly 60 African Americans serve in the U.S. Congress and they continue the spirit of the founding members by leading a charge for equitable policy. The CBC led the House effort to pass uh, police reform, the Justice in Policing Act, following the murder of George Floyd. And despite this week's setback, the caucus continues to urge President Biden and Congress to act on voting rights. So today, we remember the contributions of the Congressional Black Caucus. And that's for the culture. Thank you for watching Prime, and have a great weekend.